What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the recap. Yes, sir. We are here to talk about today's slate of games. It felt good. I got to sit in my chair and watch basketball for five hours, six hours straight. What a day. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new. People be asking, why isn't the recap every single day? That's because every single day doesn't have this type of production. We had MVP candidates having MVP performances. The hottest man in basketball stays steaming hot. We had a foul call that could potentially be called a phantom foul, even though it might have been the right call. My favorite team got a win. Y'all know there's always a recipe. If my team is doing something positive, I'm here to talk about it. But also when they do something extremely negative, I'm here to talk about it. So anything the Bull, anytime the Bulls do anything, I'm here to talk about it. There's a lot. Let's start off with Wardell, Stephen, Curry, Jr. Almost drop a 50. Before this game started, me and the homies were just sitting in the party playing MLB The Show because it's, it's been a dick thing since it's released. And my boy Mike was like, what's Steph going for today? 30, 40, 50? I was like, he got a good 50 piece in him. I was close. I mean, if we just put a money on it and we was in Vegas – I lose money, but I, I was very, very close for Stephen Curry dropping 50. This is one of the hottest streaks of basketball ever, y'all. And I hope I hope that you've been really tuned in to the streak because I don't know how long it will last. And I don't know how often we, we're going to see a streak like this ever again. Stephen Curry is just such an incredible player. And the funny thing about this is I was putting together this whole piece about the Golden State Warriors. And when I say piece, it makes it seem like I'm writing an article. But it's really like me rambling about the Warriors for 10 minutes straight. And that might still come. Because while Wardell Stephen Curry Jr. is going crazy out there and dropping 50 pieces and being the most efficient shooter of all time, being the greatest shooter of all time, and shutting up a lot of the doubters, there's a lot of question marks revolving the Warriors, not just this season, but their near future. And not, not even just near future, their future future, because um, some, some comments have come out from Steve Kerr talking about James Wiseman, and it's always been, or at least this entire se season, thinking about James Wiseman as a piece to potentially do something else, because when you think about the timetable of Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson when he comes back, and Draymond Green, James Wiseman doesn't fit the timetable for a team that's trying to continue what seemed like could be a dead dynasty. You know what I'm trying to say? So I was going to do a whole 10-minute video about that, and I, I might still do that. But let's just talk about Stephen Curry again. He he ended a crazy streak of made free throws. He missed one today, whatever. That would have been the 50 right there, but he had to miss that. And for them to come out there and win this game now, granted it was against the 76ers who were missing Ben Simmons, missing Tobias Harris. They were missing some of their best players. But dropping 49 on anybody is insane, especially with even with – the Philadelphia 76ers missing some of their players. They still have great perimeter defenders. Matisse Steibel gave it his all, but it don't really matter when Stephen Curry is doing what he does. One of the greatest streaks of all time, bro. He, if you are not watching Stephen Curry right now, you are missing out. And a lot of people, he, he's this streak is putting his name more in the MVP conversation. And it's also something we talked about in the party because it's hard to say no to a guy, Stephen Curry, who, if I'm not mistaken, after today's game, he might be leading the league in scoring uh, points per game because Bradley Beal was up there as well, and Stephen Curry was super close. It is 31.4 for Stephen Curry and 31.1 for Bradley Beal. So he's leading the league in scoring. He's as efficient this season as he was when he was the unanimous MVP. But the only thing is the team ain't been as successful. And then we had this whole, not debate, but just discussion, talking about how much did that matter? I mean, when, when Russell Westbrook won MVP, that was like the lowest seed of a player to win MVP, at least in recent history. And that was a big talking point for some, pe some, some people. He's averaging triple-double, but he can only lead his team to this playoff spot. Well, right now, as good as Stephen Curry has been, they are sitting at the ninth seed. If this was last year, they're not in the playoffs right now. And Stephen Curry has been amazing. So, of course, he deserves to be in the conversation. Um, but ultimately, I don't. I think that the the voters are going to put a lot into account when it comes to the team record, as they probably should to some extent. I don't know. I don't have a vote. If I did, I was voting for this other guy that had an MVP performance, and that was Nikola Jokic. One of the games of the year. I'm never going to say this is the game of the year because things are always changing. Um, but, man, did this game take forever because it was a double overtime and it was close to going to triple overtime. I want to spend a couple seconds talking about the Memphis Grizzlies because they, they fall hard in this one. But there was like four or five times in these regulation, overtime, and double overtime where I felt like they had that game wrapped. John Morant doing magnificent things. I have no doubt in my mind this man John Morant is about to be ridiculously good for years and years to come. All-stars, all of that. Um, but it felt like they had this closed out a few different times. Grayson Allen had some plays. It was like, ah, and they end up they end up losing it. Consider it a choke, whatever you want. But I love this team. 
<laughs> I just do. Listen, they were missing. They were missing some big time players. Um, Valanciunas is in per, uh, concussion protocol. Dylan Brooks went out there. Jaron Jackson Jr. is still not playing basketball. And I was listening to No Dunks. I guess they changed him from out to doubtful every single night, which means that he is slowly on the on the comeback. But we still haven't seen Jaron Jackson Jr. all this season. Valanciunas is gone. Dylan Brooks is gone. And they still went to a double overtime game with the Denver Nuggets and almost pulled this out, bro. This team is super young. They had a starter lineup of Ja, uh, Grayson Aller, Xavier, Xavier uh, Tillman. Cal Anderson's the old man in the game right now. Everybody on this list now looking at it that play minutes for them is super young. Justice Winslow's back in the lineup, which is a W. He the second oldest as far as NBA experience go. And they just went to a double, almost triple overtime game. So shout out to Memphis. I know it does suck to lose a game like this, um, especially when you had it a couple times. But you you lost to Nikola Jokic, who was the MVP candidate. And when I'm talking about the Memphis Grizzlies being this close to closing it out and then losing it, it was more of Jokic taking it, it feels like. Making big-time play, big-time shots. Will Barton had a good game. I think he started off scoring the first 13 points for the team. Big game from him. Michael Porter Jr. is as efficient as he always is. A, a very silent life at night for Aaron Gordon, but this is all about Jokic. The stat line is 47, 15 rebounds, 8 assists, and a couple big-time shots. I don't know how Jokic, when he, like, I know he's slim Jokic now, but he does always still look a little bit out of shape. He played 45 minutes. 45 minutes, which is um, basically tied for the most minutes played with John Morant. Wouldn't be able to tell. So that is the MVP of the season so far. Yes, Stephen Curry is playing great, and he, he's in the conversation, but it has to still be Jokic because Jamal Murray is out. Um, who else was out in this game? Uh, Monte Morris is out, and they still win a big-time, big-time win. I don't want anybody to take for granted what's going on in the league right now with when it comes to all-time great point guards and how many of them are in the league at the moment. I know I'm jumping here and there, but I'm still thinking about Stephen Curry and then um, transitioning to Chris Paul. And, and his win, his team's win against the Milwaukee Bucks, Devin Booker, big time shot. But everybody wants to talk about the foul call at the end of it. I think that the last two-minute report of this game is about to be as long as ever. Was it the right call? Was it the wrong call? I don't know. I don't really care. It just sucks that it ended like that. You know, I, I'm neutral here. I don't care if the Suns win. I don't care if the Milwaukee Bucks win this game. I'm neutral. To see any game end with, like, free throws is kind of is kind of lame. But I looked at the replay a few times. It did look like that PJ may have glazed his arm. I don't know. I don't know. But that's a very lame way to end the game. Chris Paul, big-time shots. The fact that this man, I think it's 55 assists to three turnovers in the last X amount of games. Point God. And he passed Magic Johnson today. So think about this. We have Stephen Curry putting up an insane stat line, almost 50. We have Chris Paul passing Magic Johnson. Russell Westbrook is still an all-time great point guard in the league. He did not have a great shoot tonight today, but he hit one of the biggest shots of the game to close it out against OKC, so I'm giving him that. And all of those performances from point guards were active today. Please do not take for granted all the things that's going on. The Phoenix Suns continue to to improve and continue to stay under the radar. Um, my guy on Twitter asked, who is the most underrated team in the NBA right now? And the first team that came to mind was the Suns. Kenny, they're the two seed. How are they underrated? Because I don't see many people talking about them as contenders. I just don't. Um, DeAndre Aiden, amazing today. He had a lot of Giannis assignments. And, and especially in the second half, he was pretty good. Now, when he had the guard, P.J. Tucker, that was a different story because P.J. Tucker's going to sit in that corner. He's going to hit those shots. But when it comes to stopping Giannis, he did a pretty good job. And I know you don't look at me and say, Kenny, Giannis ended with 33. Please go back and watch that game and watch DeAndre Aiden's defense on, on Giannis. And you'll be like, oh, I understand what Kenny is talking about because Giannis is going to score regardless. It's Giannis. But DeAndre Aiden's uh, defense was really good. They get this win. I would have loved to see it go to another overtime, but the refs – um. Refs had a different idea. Was it the right call? Was it not? I don't really know. Chris Middleton had a big shot in this game. Um, like I mentioned, P.J. Tucker's back. He hit a big shot. It was one of them, but it was a big one right in front of the bench. And the Phoenix Suns get a win. Next game that we will talk about, and it may be the last one, was the Chicago Bulls getting the win. Um, the, I mean, the, the Celtics were missing some key players. Kemba Walker's out in this one. Marcus Smart is out in this one. They were running um, a pretty bad secondary lineup, I must admit. But even then, nothing is given if you're a Bulls fan. So, you know, you have to grind this one out. Shout out to the short king. Uh, Tremont Waters came into – he didn't play any of the first three quarters, came into the fourth quarter, and was amazing. Shout out to the short king. I hope he gets more burn. I hope he gets more burn because in the fourth quarter alone, he was three for three with nine points, two steals, an assist, a rebound. Short King, he had this play where it's like 10 seconds on the clock. I think the Bulls are up by three or maybe even four. 
Um, and he just runs straight to the basket. He in and out moved. Told my side of He wasted like two seconds, got up and down, and got a bucket. So Tremont, great defense and everything. Um, but for the Bulls, that's a very, very crucial, must-needed win for a team that's still trying to compete. Um, unfortunate for the Bulls, um, the Washington Wizards also win. So that's five straight games for them. And I guess I'll talk about them a little bit before we get out of this one. But they have jumped back up to the 10th seed. Nothing is given. It's a big-time race for this 10th seed um, with, with the Raptors still really close, only a, game, a half a game behind, and then the Washington Wizards being tied. But the Bulls have the tiebreaker at the moment, so they stay at 9. Uh, the Pacers lose out on Miles Turner, who's going to be out for some some time. And the Bulls are only two games behind. The Wizards are only two games behind them, and they're in a the three-game losing streak. They lost tonight again. So if I'm not mistaken, the Spurs is not a game that I watched. Um, so it could be scary hours for Indiana for the remainder of the season. I don't know what the strength of schedule looks like to end this all. Uh, they go against OKC. They go against Detroit, Orlando. Oh, my God. They got three layups. They got to win these next three games. If they lose two out of these next three, ga three games, it's maybe not um, maybe not great for their, their playoff chances. But they got three, three layups. Even without Miles Turner being there, it should be a layup. And the Washington Wizards on a five-game win streak, they have hit a stride. And a lot of that, if I'm being honest with you, is that they've hit the easiest part of their schedule. And they still have a super easy part, which is a good thing for them. Russell Westbrook has been very, very good over the last course of X amount of games. Tonight, like I mentioned earlier, he didn't shoot the ball well, but he hit one of the biggest shots of the game. Bradley Beal is still doing his thing. And they're winning games and as a Bulls fan it's scary to see them win games but it's it's actually also fun because if the Bulls are making the playoffs I'm not too upset about Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal being that team yeah honestly if we're being the 10 seed they're not going to make the playoffs but those are two players Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook when the game is on the line it's a one game elimination I'm interested to see how they play together you know what I'm saying so shout out to them for still being um still being active and getting a must win today and that is it tomorrow's slate of games may not be nearly as good as today as tomorrow we have Orlando versus the Hawks, Charlotte versus the Knicks. It was just we just found out that Lamelo will be back this season, which is great for the NBA. Nets versus Pelicans should be a fun one again. Clippers versus Trailblazers and Damian Lillard has in this little slump, and hopefully he can get out of that. Trailblazers versus King, not a great, not a great slate of games tomorrow. But you got today. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new. That's all. Call game.